statue put a plaque up and give him the key to the city as soon as they can figure out who his parole officer is. Big Bully Busick. Just look at this guy. The hat, the mustache, the cigar, the attitude. He is just a total package, if you will. And he's going in the ring against a young competitor from Los Angeles, California, known simply as Chaz, but I don't think a man who the fans think has one name, Big Bully Busick, calling him Mario all, all right. the time. He does bear a resemblance. There you see the good-looking favorite of the ladies here. That's Chaz, one of the light heavyweight competitors here in the Global Wrestling Federation, the only federation in the world that has a light heavyweight division, and we will be telling you a little bit more about that in the weeks to come. Absolutely one of the greatest type wrestling matches you will ever want to see, a light heavyweight contest between two talented men. This certainly isn't it, but the light heavyweight division here in the GWF is something to behold, and I can't wait to get the light heavyweight division up and running here in the GWF. No light heavyweight is Jim Cornette. Oh, no. I understand you had a chance to talk to him a little bit earlier. We'll have that interview right after this match between Big Bully Busick and Chaz. Well, Jim Cornette's a mouth that roared. I think he's known lovingly by his whoa by his fans. Did you see Big Bully Busick? We talk about how much he looks like Mario and how he's a big character. He's a, I think he's an unwrapped package as opposed to a total package, but this guy has got muscles on top of muscles. In the gym, no one can touch him, but as we said earlier, weights don't fight back, and I think if anybody ever will fight back against Big Bully Busick, it will be young Chaz. Now a test of strength here. And there you see a very good look at that glove. The glove that's being hindered a little bit by our official, but you're talking about the glove that is used for the bully blaster. Oh, yes. Now, heart punches are banned in every federation as an illegal move, but Big Bully Busick says his bully blaster is not a heart punch. Oh, well, the, uh, the Pope isn't Catholic then because that bully blaster is, is as much a heart punch as any heart punch that's ever been in wrestling. And look at Chaz here showing a good bit of determination and strength against Big Bully Busick. He puts a third in the stomach. Gonna send Busick across. Coming across with the hip toss. Didn't work. Look at Chaz. A big move. And now he gets the hip toss. Chaz really working on Big Bully Busick in there. Another hip toss over. Gonna work on that left arm. And you've got to take away a point of balance on somebody like Big Bully Music. You just can't match him strength for strength. You've got to do something else, Craig. You're talking about the balance. Perfect balance right there by the Big Bully. A low center of gravity. And he looked like he might have gotten him. Jazz tries a couple times with some martial arts moves, but it's the Big Bully with a big brawny move. And a thumb to the eye. That's how you stop the momentum of a quick man like Jazz. But he's still got the Savat right to the chin of the Big Bully. Chaz has got the right idea. He is not going in there and trying to match muscle for muscle with Big Bully Busick. He's trying martial arts. He's trying high-flying maneuvers, and there's one, but look at Busick. Well, this flight was delayed, and finally the landing, a count of two, as Big Bully Busick, I think, maybe had the knee towards the side of Chaz as the official started counting with the lightest cover we've seen in a long time. Well, I'm not surprised that Big Bully Busick would try a, a pin, pinning combination just like that with a knee just in the proximity of the opponent. The official has to look out for these wrestlers in there, make sure no one gets injured. And he may have thought Chaz was down for the count there and tried to pin him. And oh, my goodness, the clothesline from Big Bully Busick. We have yet to see the Bully Blaster in this match. And I think the referee may have been trying to keep young Chaz from having to suffer the effects of that, that heart punch. That's what it is. And the reason you haven't seen the Bully Blaster is if we had seen it, we'd be talking about other things because it'd be another match in the ring and they'd be helping young Chaz out. Here's the reverse chin lock by the man from Whitton, West Virginia's powerhouse hill, Big Bully Music. And, you know, a lot of people have been asking me where Whitton, West Virginia is. And I understand that, well, actually, I can't explain where it is because I really don't know where it is. <laughs> We're in West Virginia, one of the great smaller towns in the United States of America, just full of small towns. And let's say this about the smaller towns, that's where the Patriot is from. We talk about the Patriot being from all across the United States. I'm sure he would be proud to say he's from Whitton, West Virginia. But I think Billy Bully Music would have a few things about him saying, it. here he goes, setting him up. There it is, the Bully Blaster right on target. Rolls him over. Count of one, count of two. That'll do it. The winner of the match, Big Bully Music. Well, what in the world, States? 
I'm sure he would be proud to say he's from Wooden, West Virginia. But I think Billy Bully Music would have a few things about him saying, it. here he goes, setting him up. There it is, the Bully Blaster right on target. Rolls him over. Count of one, count of two. That will do it. of the baseball bat. He challenged me to a fight, and back I laid out. down the rules, and he tried to back out. Well, no, wait. When did he try to back out? I, I must have missed that part of the interview. That boy was almost in tears. Oh, Meanwhile, we got an outstanding match here. <laughs> yeah, changed the subject back into the, back into the ring. Bobby Duncan having Mantell talk about almost in tears. Did you hear Mantell screaming just moments ago? Well, and I'm again, sure And again there. Mantell forearm shivers. The left jaw of Duncan and Duncan continues to just jerk on that arm. You realize I was an Olympic class fencer. It's, it's been 20 years. You were? Yes, I was. An Olympic class fencer. Does that mean you went to the Olympics in fencing or no, sir, I was at law school yeah. at the time and we didn't uh, I did not go that year. I, I went ahead and accepted a job with a law firm in New York. While Duncan continues to hold that hammer lock on Cowboy John Mantell, and he tries to figure a way out of that hold, we have to take a break, wrestling fans. We'll be right back with more. And they're both rather evenly matched. Duncan has the youth on his side. Mantell, the veteran, the seasoning. I understand Mr. Duncan uh, played football at University of Texas. He sure did. A truly gutty boy out here. He's, he's doing a fine starter. job. Four years. Four years he started for that team. What'd he play? And he plays uh, He plays arena football right now. Does I, I forget. I believe I believe he was a defensive tackle. Uh, Does he play with the Dallas Texans here in arena football? You know, I'm going to have to ask him about that. Well, he's certainly a fine wrestler. We can see that. He's given uh, Cowboy Johnny Mantell all he can handle tonight. Mantell with that body scissor. As Duncan locked up tight. Duncan trying to break those, those boots loose. Trying to break that scissor. And Mantell just continues to squeeze. He's trying to squeeze the life out of Bobby Duncan. Looks like he's succeeding, too. Mantell telling the crowd, asking the crowd to be quiet. Cowboy John Mantell. Big box across the ears of Duncan. Broke his own hold there. Now smash that head right into the corner buckle. It is amazing the amount of punishment these two fine athletes can inflict and accept. Duncan's face in there again. Oh, that was back with an elbow. A forearm shiver of his own and Mantell on the retreat. Duncan right in there after him. Mantell slung in hard. This time he slides out of the way as Duncan comes into that corner buckle area really hard. Here's Mantell. Back to back pin. There's a one count. Duncan trying to battle back. Mantell in with the front face lock. Referee in there to check for the choke. This is really fine action tonight, though. All the Sportatorium fans are certainly getting their money's worth in this in this uh, match. We'd like to say a big hello to the A. Maceo Smith High School Band, directed by Cecil Neal, the principal Thurman Stovers, who brought their group down here to the Sportatorium tonight. You may be able to catch a shot of some of the band members as the television crew makes their way around the ring. There they are in the background of that shot. Right behind Scott Quest, one of our cameramen. Mentel continuing to yell at the crowd to shut up. There's one minute remaining in this bout. Isn't it amazing that these men are still going strong after this long? The kind of punishment they've inflicted on each other, the blows they've delivered, the number of pins that we've had tonight, the fine wrestling technique we've seen. These are two outstanding wrestlers here tonight, Dorn. Duncan with Mantell in the buckle area. Got the break now. 
during the reverse knife edges. Beautiful deal out of the corner. That's Big Bobby Duncan has about 20 seconds remaining before the bell in this match. He's going to have to make it a quick pin if he gets one. Duncan sends him for the ride. Mantell in. Oh, big power slam. There's one. And two. No, not enough for two. Of the legendary Sputnik Monroe. His name is Bubba. He weighs 240 pounds and hails from Alexandria, Louisiana. And his father is down ringside with me, Doyle King. Welcome. Sputnik Monroe. Thank, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I, uh, it's a great privilege for me to see my son uh, in the ring at this time because you see a hand-led, breastfed, pure, 100% athlete. No, uh, no long tights, no knee pads, no elbow pads. Uh, a real, honest-to-goodness, back-to-the-basics wrestler. He's out here to wrestle tonight, then. That's right. We also uh, capitalize on a little brawling, too. We, well, no, we, no, we no doubt. We at home call him Bubba the Brawler, Monroe. Knowing your career, I mean, brawling, what, what else would we expect but for you to raise up a brawler? That's exactly right. 3,500 wrestling holds and 10,000 variations, and I used to catch alligators and use him for bait, so he's pretty tough boy. Oh, right into that boot. We'll see how tough he is right there as he goes into the boot of Rainbow Brown. Brown up to the mid-ring rope. Monroe turns around, high cross body. It may all be over for your son right now. Oh, look at that. He kicked out with only a one count. He's a tough young man, I'll tell you that, Sputnik. Uh, his uh, his credentials speak for themselves. We'll we'll see exactly how tough he is. Referee stats into the side headlock. He's uh, the uh, gentleman he's wrestling is a pretty fair hand in, himself. Uh, Rainbow, you call him? Rainbow Brown. Rainbow has, Brown has a devastating. He's a he's definitely a high risk wrestler. Of course, when you take those risks, sometimes the other the. the the move can be turned around on you, but he has a devastating drop kick from the top rope that is just out, outrageous. Nice shoulder block tackle. Oh, but Bubba caught him right in the midsection there. Double Brown all the way over. Bang, right across the back of the neck. Sends Brown down to his knees. Now straps on that arm bar. Very good, very good. Bubba Monroe in the black boots, the red trunks, and as Sputnik pointed out, no elbow pads, no knee pads on this young man. He's out there to seek and destroy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Monroe with Brown face down on the mat inside that hammerlock hole. Laid that boot down on that arm. And look at Bubba Strutt. Did you teach him that? Old family tradition. Rough, tough, and hard to bluff. Bubba back in there on Brown, the Irish whip. And Bubba comes in hard to that knee. Second time he's made that, that same mistake. Came into the boot of Brown earlier. Now into that knee. And Brown battling back against Bubba Monroe now. Brown a couple of lefts. Another left. Crosses with the right. Oh, a headbutt. Right into the forehead. I thought that was an illegal move. There's a two count before Bubba's able to kick out. And no, headbutts are perfectly legal. Well, they are. Well, we'll see who's the toughest headbutter here in a minute. Body slam and Brown back in that headbutt on the right shoulder of Monroe. Right back in there on him. Sets him up. Chicken wing suplex. Makes the cover. Bubba kicks out once again. At the two count, that's about four or five times he's been pinned and has managed to kick out before a three count was gained. Monroe in hard. Nice high elevated back drop. Brown with the crowd really behind him. You see him work his way up to the top rope right here. Is he going to try that high risk drop kick? Yes, oh, I caught Bubba right in the shoulder. Right across the upper right pecs and Brown. Brown, he should have made the cover long ago. He might, he might have been able to win the match right then. The boy, the boy Zigner's glance swole up. He's not using well, his head. He's got his foot on the rope. Two count, but Monroe close enough to the rope to get his foot over the rope. Referee stops the count at two. But Brown took a lot of time. 
You hear Sputnik. Oh, look at this. School board him over this one, two, and he gained a three count. There he is. Unbelievable. He gained there you are. There you are. Great, great. Sensational. Bubba. Heavyweight ranks. We haven't seen him vying for that title as of yet. That's Luscious Mike up on the mid ring rope. Having a few words for the crowd. I'm Doyle King. Joining me at the ringside table is Cowboy John Mantell. That's right, Doyle. You know, I was letting you talk there. I'm going to let the uninformed talk for a little while. And then we're going to let the informed tell you what's really going on. First off, this young punk that's in the ring right now, I want to think he's a cowboy, doesn't know what side of the horse to get on, let alone which end of it to feed. And I'm going to tell you something. I carry things around in my saddlebags for purposes and for reasons. And he's the type of guy that's a purpose and a reason. So you're talking about... I'm, talk, you're talking I'm talking about, about anybody that wants to mess with my tag team titles or mess with me. And this kid right here is putting his nose in my business, yelling and screaming at me before the match. He needs to be worried about his opponent out here. <laughs> Did you just see him slap the rump of Luscious Mike Lane? Lane out there, out there uh, talking to the, or screaming at the wrestling fans. Had his posterior draped over that that mid ring rope, and Bobby Duncan just took a big piece out of it. Well, that might have been real cute for everybody to get a chuckle out of, but I bet it doesn't make Mr. Lane very happy. No, he doesn't look very happy, does he? Not at all. And where did he get these boots anyway, Doyle King? They're not laced around his feet or nothing. Look at him flopping around the calves, bad on his ankles. <laughs> doesn't seem to be affecting his wrestling any though well you notice when i wrestled him who was winning on points don't you that's right on I points was. they what john you know as well as i that they don't have points in wrestling well they need to matter of fact i'm going to suggest that right now doll king and some night just to prove to you my natural wrestling ability that we bring three judges out here at ringside and score points for takedowns reversals and near falls and let's just keep track and see who's the best going around here well, well i'll guarantee you what and none of them can match me you see those boots right there well them boots ain't made for those, walking those boots belong to his daddy i don't care big who's, bob duncan senior I don't, I don't care whose daddy they belong to those boots can only talk the talk they can't walk the walk and if they're going to talk the talk they better be able to walk the walk with the cowboy johnny mantel there's a shot of Mike Davis, who's... Hey, you know, Brandon up, makes me nervous over here, too, man. Why is he out here? What's he oh, doing? Brandon Baxter, yeah. he, he keeps time and rings the bell. Is that okay? Well, you know, he's had some bad luck here lately, being involved out here at ringside. Maybe he should learn that maybe ringside's not for minors, you know. Maybe, maybe things happen to him out here because he's putting himself into a dangerous situation. You think so? Well, well, you're not going to make anything happen to him, are you? No, I don't pick on kids. Well, uh, it's certainly more to say than, than Hollywood John Tatum, who, who does, or, or Maniac Mike Davis, who you saw over there, hey, who does. Hey, too. with the young kids of today, there's no telling what he probably did. He probably needs to be slapped. Maybe his daddy won't beat him at home. Maybe he needs to be beat. Some kids need to be hit, you know. Do you do your kids that way? I have a good kid, Dolphin. You know that as well as I do. My daughter doesn't need to be hit because she was raised properly. I see. There's Maniac Mike now sitting on the ringside. What's the, he doing the, the here? Stairs. Well, I don't know what he's doing here. What's he's, his connection he's, here? He's crazy, man. You know, he, he comes and goes and does what he pleases. Well, well, at least that, it seems that way. You know, I know an equine dentist that wears a hat like he wears, that green thing that he wears. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What's it for? Well, he wears it because he does it up in the Midwest where it's real cold. You yeah. know, he wears it over his ears. Uh -huh. He's sort of light on top like I am, doing. But... Uh, there's there's no reason for Mike Davis to be wearing that that down. I wonder if that used to belong to Sam Houston or something. Uh, oh, nice nice uh, hip toss. Yeah, sure and was. Goal again. Do I not give credit when credit's due? I'll yes, say it. I'll tell it the way I see it. That Lane tried to slide out of the ring, but Bobby Duncan grabbed his arms, kept him from doing so. Now power slammed him. Now comes back over. Oh, this is the elbow. Lane really out advertised of the lane. that elbow there. Yeah, he did. Really advertised it. Now Lane stomped and that's back. probably why, because them boots that his daddy used to wear are probably too big for him. I see. He's trying to fill cartel. Well, what in the world is the cartel? But more importantly, who is this boss we keep hearing of Gaylord? This promises to be an excellent match. Young out of Houston, Texas. 
going against Rip Rogers, who gets a hold of the arm bar. Rogers hailing from Seymour, Indiana, and right now he saw more of gorgeous Gary Young than he wanted to see. Oh, that's good. Going for those lines of the week early, are we? Seymour, Indiana, and Karachi, Pakistan. Boy, that's uh, not, the, not the Twin Cities there, I don't think. And the fans picking up the chant of Go, Gary, Go. Young, very popular here in the Global Dome. That's a great look at the fans here in the Global Dome. Rogers with a step over. Nice. Oh, followed by the drop kick by gorgeous Gary Young. Rogers looking for higher ground. He may just find it, courtesy of the gorgeous one. He found about five feet of higher ground there, Craig, as Gary Young really is in control of Rip Rogers, and Rip Rogers takes six on the outside. Rip and Mucken. Now, it's actually, there's a lot of debate how Mucken is spelled. We can't even find out because every time we ask him, he says, don't call me Norman. That's not even what we're That's not an answer that. to the question at all. I think that he's going for the spelling of M-A-K-H-A-N. And I don't know how you pronounce that. We haven't, we just now got the spelling right. We're going to pronunciation next week. But he ain't Norman no more. Gaylord and Rogers in a collar and elbow tie-up. And uh, knee lift by Rogers puts him in control. Trying to go for the hip toss. Tiger, Jeff Gaylord, all set and ready for action, and Rip Rogers once again going to take six on the outside. He wants no part of Jeff, and here he comes to the outside to meet him. He's about to uh, get part of him as Gaylord. Oh, no, wrong corner, Rip. Hello, how are you? Rip Rogers having his problems with the team of Jeff Gaylord and gorgeous Gary Young. As we have yet to see Muck and Sting in the ring, but outside of the ring, he does his damage. Doctor's trying to figure out what to do with the big man. He better get over. No, not there in time to prevent the tag. Here comes gorgeous Gary Young. Into the ropes, Young. Hi, that drop. Now comes Sting. And Sting may ring veteran, if you will, there, Craig and Bill Irwin. Wild? Is that what you said? Wild. Wild and wily. <laughs> that sounds like a show on Saturday morning. But it, it, it's a pretty good show. But Bill Irwin, we talk about changes in appearance, changes in attitude. Bill Irwin has been around the horn two or three times. He's... Nice leapfrog by Skip Young as he brings him over with a hip toss. Tried to get the elbow, but Irwin's out of the way. <laughs> Skip Young got out of the way, too. Irwin has been very small, has lost a lot of weight, has put it back on, has lost more weight. Now he's about mid-range in there, has cut his hair short, shaved his mustache, grew it back. That middle game we talk about, Craig Irwin plays it well. The roll-up by uh, Skip Young, but into the ropes goes Wild Bill Irwin as he's able to get away before Sean O'Brien can employ the count. <laughs> Irwin with a series of elbows to the side of the head now goes to work. Just before I say that, these guys are just going so fast for reversing with those chain wrestling moves. Nice takeover there by Skip Young. Now going to work on the arm. Wild Bill Irwin, I don't know if that's his whip arm or not. Apparently a lot of strength left into it as the slam comes down. No, Young holds on. Probably not a bad tactic for Skip Young to go after that arm that mans the whip, if you will, Craig, because for all it's worth, that whip is a weapon. Irwin could grab that thing and start whipping on the back of Skip Young. Skip may be going after that arm just to keep Irwin from being able to use the whip, but I think... I think he's got the other arm. I think Irwin is a right-handed whipper. Skip working on that left arm. Irwin trying.
trying to get some of the feeling back in that arm by putting pressure against the chin of Skip Young. Irwin adds a knee to break the hold. And the rope goes Skip Young in. Backbreaker. Just before Young hit the canvas, he hit the knee. Excellent, excellent tactics there by Bill Irwin. Just as Young was going to be slammed into the mat, Irwin stuck that knee in just a little of the kidney area. Not really a backbreaker, but really a, maybe a kidney breaker and a body slam. Good move. Snap mirror into a rear chin lock by Wild Bill Irwin. Irwin, a man who has held many championships, a lot of it in, in the tag team field, including the AWA, the NWA National, and the American Tag Team Championship. Right now, getting the best of Skip Young, but Young doesn't like to take a lot of that, especially from a man the likes of Wild Bill Irwin. Right to the old breadbasket there, Skip Young going downstairs to stymie the wild man from Colorado, and there's a headbutt. That'll stop anything. Especially when it comes from the head of Skip Young, a man who is known to use that as a weapon. Young will brawl with you as he shows here with a close fist followed by the chop right across the bridge of the nose. Irwin gut wrench duplex to come back and gets the cover. Thinks he has it, but only a count of two. As quick as Skip Young is, you don't get a count of three unless you really lock him up. Absolutely. We talk about the championships Bill Irwin has held. Skip Young has held his fair share of championships, too, not the least of which the Southern Heavyweight Championship in Florida back in the early 1980s. Very, very popular down there and is now here in the Global Wrestling Federation. Tatum comes up with a floating mule kick. That'll do it very quickly. The handsome stranger trying to get his wits about him. Has him up for the suplex. Locks it in. One, two, three. The handsome stranger gets the count of three and gets the victory. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner of the match, the handsome stranger. It'll be the stranger against the lightning kid in the semifinals. This is a European style tournament. Thus, you have three finalists instead of two. Both of these men would like nothing better than to be in that final round. Right now, it looks like Mike Davis may be well on his way if Brian Adias can't mount the comeback. Adias, well-versed in track at the University of Texas at Arlington, runs a lap around the ring, trying to get out of that predicament, and Manning didn't see. Was that a count of three or not? Yes, the count of three. Garvin climbs the ropes. You can count along with the fans on this one. Pressure moves. Terry Daniels, Jerry Lynn, two good mat workers. Something you don't see too much in wrestling anymore, Craig. The hammerlock being applied. Now Daniels allows Lynn to get back up. In the corner they go. Daniels. Would like very much to get into the next round. Going for the upper hand. Missed with that move. Oh, boy. Lynn goes up to the top rope. Daniels makes his way up. Lynn comes flying. Cross body block. Catches him. Locks the leg. Count of one. Count of two. Count of three. Jerry Lynn will advance. Let's see, Van, ladies and gentlemen. One fall with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing on my left. Weighing in at 250 pounds from Missouri, Ken Johnson. <laughs> at 230 pounds from San Antonio, Texas, Shawn Michaels. Well, Shawn Michaels is back here on Texas All-Star Wrestling now as he goes up against Ken Johnson. Michaels hooks up with Johnson. Now Johnson with the arm bar and reverse, and Michaels reverses that. 
Here I am, Steve. I know you asked for it. The people asked for it, and here I am. <laughs> well, you're back again. Yeah, I don't think the only thing the people were asking for, Elmer Drill, was Jose Lothario come down and punch you out. That was a sucker punch you threw at that young kid. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. Now, you don't think to tell me if that was Jose Lothario, you wouldn't do the same thing? I don't think so. Look at Shawn Michaels. What moves were getting in the ring from him? Michaels holds onto the head of Ken Johnson here on Texas All-Star Wrestling. Did you see how easy that was? I wish that was Lothario. If it was Lothario, I did the same thing. I knocked him out, too. I can't wait for that match. Well, you're pretty smart because you had the referee come in between. You had him blocked out, and you just reached up and sucker punched him. You know, I know you do a lot of things, but... Oh, well, what can I say? Hey, in love and war, all is fair, Steve. And if you can't handle it in this business, you must get out of it. This is the tough man's business, baby. And you can ask Jose Lothario, Chava Guerrero, or anybody. Oh, the cross body block. Oh, I thought Michaels had him. Yeah, you see him holding onto the trunks there, Steve? I don't think he was holding onto the trunks. A little later on, ladies and gentlemen, Voodoo Malumba will be here. Also... The American Force will be out there, the Texas Tag Team Champion. And coming up in the next match, a man we haven't seen in a while here on Texas All-Star Wrestling, Vinny Valentino. <laughs> Rudolph Hunt? No, Vinny Valentino. Oh, oh, Vinny Valentino. Wow! What is this, from the grape country? Is that where he's from? Michaels grabs the leg of Ken Johnson. There's a spin him around and a drop kick. Going to the side headlock, Shawn Michaels, San Antonio... Texas, San Antonio Road. <laughs> what am I supposed to be impressed? <laughs> I don't even like the song. Well, I know there's a nice backdrop by Ken Johnson. I know you're a country music lover, Miguel, so don't tell me you don't know who Bob Wills was. Sure I do. I'm sure you know who he is. You were about the same age as he was. <laughs> Slam by Ken Johnson. Elbow by Ken Johnson. I think you wrote that song, didn't you, Stack? I may have. They exchange blows. Vinny Valentino, I'll tell you what, we ought to take up a collection for that guy and buy him a pair of boots. He don't even have any boots. Well, Michaels finds a knee in the midsection. Now look the elbow to the back. Elbow smash. On the ropes of Johnson, here he comes, has that fist doubled up into the back of Sean yeah. Michaels. Look, look at real exciting Sean Michaels. <laughs> Not too exciting now, is he? <laughs> Michaels gets backflip as Johnson got a shoulder in there, buried it in the midsection, flipped him over. Johnson reaching for a slam. Oh, backbreaker. You see that? What did I tell you? You can't sell this Johnson guy short. He, he knows a few tricks himself. They exchange blows are directly in front of us here on Texas All-Star Wrestling. They're backing into the corner. Michael's in the corner. Ken Johnson in front. Johnson grabs him by the arm. Whips him all the way across the ring. In goes Johnson. Michael's moved out of the way. Johnson buries the shoulder into the steel post that holds up the corner over there. I'll tell you what, look at that. Look at that young kid, Michael's huffing and a puffing. You know, if he wants to get in the major leagues with Chavo Guerrero and myself, he's better be able to wrestle all night long, baby, because I'll wrestle. I don't care how long it takes to defeat my opponent. Here he is. He's up on the middle rope. He's pounding the head of Ken Johnson. Oh, he's going up on the top rope. On the top rope, there's a fist. There's a flip. He's up. He catches Johnson. He backflips him. Drop kicks him. Drop kicks him again. Oh, the Shawn Michaels is really exciting. As a man, there's that power slam. It should be all over. One, two, three, and it is. It's all over. Shawn Michaels flipping off that rope, coming up with some great moves. And Shawn Michaels wins another one here on Texas All-Star Wrestling as he defeats Ken Johnson. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the match for the next ring, we're going to talk to El Madrill. Look, I, I don't want to talk to you because you don't understand English. I'm going to talk to this man here. Okay, Shawn Michaels was great, yeah, but he interfered in my match and Chavo Guerrero's match. Now, Chavo Guerrero's not going to be in the ring right now, so Shawn Michaels, you get back there and watch that monitor, and you see a genius at work here, baby, and then we'll see how tough you are. He has no business getting involved in our business. Uh, we're going to show the people what you're talking about a little while from now. But right now, let's join our ring announcer. All right, weighing in at 232 pounds from Brooklyn, New York, Vinny Valentino. 
Weighing in at 236 pounds from Mexico City, Mexico, Chavo Guerrero. Person in the house clapping for Chavo Guerrero, and that's Al Madrill, and he's standing right here next to me. I have to say one thing about this Vinny Valentino. You know, Stevie, he was here a while back, right? And uh, he impressed a lot of people. This guy can wrestle. He's been around a lot. But he's in the ring there, like I said, with a master, one Chavo Guerrero. You hear that, Guerrero? Well, you say you're not Spanish, but it seems to me you got all the uh, pronunciations down. You know all the twists and turns of the tongue. Well, uh, Chavo taught me how to pronounce it right. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sure you put a lot of miles together on the road, plotting against everybody that you get in the ring with. Hey, baby, that's what it's all about. You see that beautiful move there? Now, why don't you tell the people what a good move that was, Steve Stack? A nice, quick snap arm drag. Thank you. Putting Vinny Valentino down, but Valentino right back up. He locks the fingers. Let it travel, let it travel. I'm going to do the body, Now, they're going for the leverage as Madrill. Sits here and roots for Chavo Guerrero. Want to ta tell all you fans in the San Antonio area, this is for San Antonio area only. Take advantage of the discount tickets for Texas All-Star Wrestling. Go by Centennial Marketplaces and get your dollar off tickets. That's San Antonio only. Centennial, what is that? Centennial Marketplaces. What is it? Grocery store. People can go by there and get tickets, huh? Is that where you buy yours? <laughs> Chavo Guerrero and Vinny Valentino. It's Valentino holding on to the head. Guerrero bouncing him off the rope. Down goes Guerrero. It's Valentino caught him with the shoulder. Over the top goes Vinny. Oh, he was going for the cross body mark and Chavo caught him. But Chavo gets kicked off by Vinny Valentino. And Valentino with an arm drag. Valentino with a drop kick. And Vinny Valentino has taken care of Chavo Guerrero as he drop kicks him out of the ring. Look at Vinny in the ring. I told you, Steve, you know, I don't want to sell this Valentino guy short, man. He's been around. He knows all the tricks of the trades. He's made a few good moves. I'm sure he's impressed you. Anything impresses you. You know, a dog chasing the car would impress you. But I'll tell you what, he's in there with Chavo Guerrero. And Chavo right now, he wants Shawn Michaels so bad he could taste it for interfering on a match where he has no business in there. Well, he may not want him later on if he ever gets him in the ring. You know, talk's cheap. And uh, we'll have to see what happens when they get in the ring. Chavo has the leg of Vinny Valentino, takes him down. I want to tell you next week here on Texas All-Star Wrestling. Coming is Private Terry Daniels of the United States Marine Corps. And he is with the Cobra Corps of the United States Marine Corps. Oh, well, I'm really impressed with the Cobra Corps. You know what can kill a cobra, don't you? What? Well, El Madrill backs off now as he watches Chavo Guerrero scissor the leg of Vinny Valentino. You know, you just mentioned this Terry Daniels guy. I, I've heard about him. I've, I've seen him around. You know, he's got a heck of a body on him, and he, he works hard, and he tries hard. And He's been around the New York area. I think he's been all over the world, you know, but uh, he's coming to Texas All-Star Wrestling. And you know well, Steve, that the toughest wrestlers in the world are right here at Texas All-Star Wrestling. Yeah, Al Madero couldn't have said it any better. There it is. You actually gave me a compliment. I can't believe that. I, I did. When you do something right, I'll be glad to compliment you. Valentino reverses on Guerrero. Oh! Oh! Chavo! Oh, he may stay down. I thought he popped something in his back. Did you see that smart move Chavo made, though? He just moved out of the way. See, that's what we do, Steve. We wait for these guys like like Valentino and like Lothario and like these Shawn Michaels. We wait for they make that right mistake, and then we take them and we beat them, and it's over. Here's Valentino off the ropes. Chavo in front. Look at Vinny. He's hooked him. No, he doesn't get him down as Chavo comes up with a fist. Chavo Guerrero with a kick to the back of Vinny Valentino. A little later on, the American Force and Voodoo Malumba yet to come. <laughs> the American Force, you mean? <laughs> it's the American Force. Yeah, the Hood and Hacksaw Higgins are going to take care of the American Force and wait till Voodoo Malumba comes up here. Can you imagine, Steve, the Voodoo Malumba taking on the Terminator? Can you imagine that? <laughs> no, I can't. I don't know if a ring anywhere is big enough to hold those two giants. There's a kick to the side of the head. A shovel girl by Vinny Valentino. Oh, he slammed Chavo's head into that turnbuckle. Here comes Guerrero off the ropes. Drop kick by Valentino. 
and Valentino drops right on top of him. Guerrero pushes him off. Referee is fed Sinclair. There's a kick. Well, both of them trying those kicks. Guerrero off the ropes. This time he goes over. He has Vinny Valentino down. One, two, and he kicks out. Chavo Guerrero has a fight on his hand here with Vinny Valentino. I always like the way Vinny... Oh, what a kick from Chavo. This may be it here, Steve. Oh, what a kick. I mean, he turned around, jumped up the air, and landed that boot right on the jaw. Uh, wasn't that a beautiful move, you see? Can't you say one thing good about Chavo Guerrero or Al Madrill? We are the greatest, baby. Small package. He's got him wrapped up. Only got a two count. Looked like he had him. That's right, he looked like it, but Chavo is always a smart way, always thinking, always knowing what to do next. Here comes Chavo off the rope, there's a kick, puts Valentino down in the center of the ring. Chavo reaches down, grabs a hair. Here comes Valentino off the rope, Chavo's in front, what's he going to do with him? Oh, there's that beautiful suplex. One, two, three. <laughs> Chavo, what I tell you, what Steve. What an exciting move from Chavo Guerrero. That was a great match, and Chavo was all the way, baby, all the way. Well, Chavo Guerrero, your compadre <laughs> with another win here on Texas All-Star Wrestling. for us, baby, I tell you. And he's Chavo making his way it. up here. On, Very good. I knew you could do it. He thought he had me, but he didn't. Shawn Michaels. You did a bad, bad, naughty, naughty thing. Your parents never taught you good from bad. You messed around with Chavo. You interfered. And I'd like for you people at home to see what I'm talking about. You talk about the sweet San Antonio boy. He never does anything. Roll that tape. Well, let's take a Roll look now tape. at the Freeman Coliseum when Shawn Michaels came into the match where Chavo and Al were battling it out. Here's the action. Well, the bandoleros are already in the ring. Never mind the bandoleros. Keep watching your screen now. There you see. There he is. Shawn Michaels. He's got no business coming into the ring. He wasn't in the match. He was. What makes you think you. that Michaels I mean, was What do you mean what makes you? Did you see the film? Did you see the VTR? Am I a liar? That's the TV lie. He came in there. He had no business. He put some scars in my head every time I look at my pretty face in the mirror now. I'm going to see Shawn Michaels. Scars on there. Well, Shawn Michaels. You want to become a big leaguer. You want to play in the big leagues. Come on, boy. I am challenging you. I am making you a favor, okay? I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to let you wrestle with the former world champion. And you're from San Antonio. You want to show all your little people here how tough you are. Come on, Daddy. Get in the ring with me if you got the guts. Si tienes la fortaleza que se necesita para un luchador, para luchar contra un campeón mundial como Chavo Guerrero, ¿Quieres intervenir en mis luchas? Te estoy haciendo un reto personal. A ti, nada más tú y yo, mano a mano. Y vamos a ver qué tanto aprendiste de José Lotario. We're going to see if José Lotario is a good teacher as you said he is. Shawn Michaels, I can't stand. And I can't wait to get you in the ring and to beat you in front of your hometown people. Shawn Michaels. <laughs> Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, because the action of Texas All-Star Wrestling coming up. Your manager, Armand Hussein. Uh, excuse me, Steve. That's my ex-manager, Armand. Well, excuse me. Your ex-manager, Armand Hussein, wouldn't tell us too much about you. And I wonder if it would be possible maybe to get a little personal with you. Sure, yeah. Well, first of all, I'd like to know maybe where your home is. Where do you come from? Well, I'm from Huntington, West Virginia. I'm a hill boy, you know. A uh, hill boy and up yes, in the sir. cold country of West Virginia. Family lives there? That's right, sir. A big family. A uh, big family. Uh, Jose, you're going into the ring in just a moment with a Terminator, and I know it's a pleasure to have to work with somebody like him. That's true. You know, a lot of people... Hey, can I ask you to do me a favor, like you and friends who come to the matches? I'd like you to, and them to call me uh, what my family and friends back home call me. What is that? Bubba. Bubba? Well, if it, yeah. anybody weighs 405 pounds, you can call him anything he wants, right? That's right. He wants it to call Baba. We're going to call Baba, whatever the main one. Okay, thank you very much. Baba the Terminator, we're going to the ring with you and Jose. You fans join us and see how they work out. Well, Jose, we're in the ring with uh, Bubba the Terminator and some of his new friends. That's right. Uh, Tom, uh, do you don't mind if I call Tom Jones? Hey, Tom. Tom, please. I want to show you something. You know, of course, you know, this is only a few things that we're going to do right now. Do you mind if you work out with my big man over here, big Bob over here? Don't Just mind at all. Not you at all. over there, please. Sure, hey, Nick, step over a little bit. Let Tom do something. 
Okay, well, Jose is going to have the Terminator with Tom Jones. A little work out here as Jose has uh, got the Terminator in the ring. It's Bubba the Terminator. Jones going for the top wrist lock. That shows you how powerful Bubba is. I don't know, Tom might come back and want to try one more time. Uh, Jose says for Tom to try to take Bubba down. He grabs that big leg. Well, the other way around, Tom's the one that goes down. He's in the side headlock. Uh oh. Okay, don't drop him. Bubba has him. He sets him up in the corner. Ladies and gentlemen, now let's take you where Bubba picks up the big weights. Let's go to the Olympic gym and watch him in a workout. Well, Bob, here they are now, All Bubba right. and Jose. It's about time they got here for that workout. We're going to really push some iron today. Jose, how are you? All right, okay. Hey, Bob, you hey Bubba, to good to see you. All right, yeah. we're ready to do them benches today. All right. Well, you know, 405 pounds, Bubba. You were here at the gym, and I guess might tell us quickly how you got to be this big. Hey, Bubba, these heavy iron, Steve. You know, I really enjoy it. Keeps me big, keeps me strong, keeps me ahead. Well, now we're going to get a little warm up before we get to the big stuff. That's right, yeah. A little light warm up. Okay, let's get on the bench and see what we got here. Looks like we got about 200 and some pounds that uh, Bubba's going to try to work out here with for us a little bit. How to step out of the way. There you go. Nice way to warm up at the Olympic gym. And he just keeps going. I, I've lost track of how many, but uh, makes it look nice and easy. Okay, now we're up to 315 pounds in this workout. Let's see if old Bubba does it right. Okay, we're up to 405 pounds now. Spotting is Bob Dixon, the owner of Olympic Gym. Come on, easy 600 pounds. Let's go. Strong. One you've already done. You've already done this today. It's lightweight for you. Strong. Well, Jose's going for the big one, 600. That's right. That's a lot of weight right there, Steve. And, uh, you know, I just hope you make it because, of course, he's done it before, you know, now. Because you, know, you never know. Let's, let, let's move in there and listen to what it takes to pick up 600 pounds. Oh, oh, Bubba got it up, all 600 pounds. Well, I hope that filled you in on the Terminator now. I want to tell you one thing. I am the pride of... Bamford, Connecticut, alertly moving around, Scoville trying to bag him into the corner, and look at this. Savoldi uh, was all set. If uh, Alamori could get Scoville near that corner. Alamori fainting toward a trip out. Keep your eye on Savoldi. Watch out for Savoldi, Arnie. And Arnie winds up slapping Alamori on the face. Open hand. Alamori's feelings are hurt. And that smile that he had on his face is replaced with a grim look now. Nice shoulder haul and takedown by Savoldi, following with an arm lock. Arnie Scullin, keeping him under control. Alamori coming to his feet now. And he doesn't stay there long. That was Savoli charging in there. And to even the count, Pugliese moves in and... Some Savoldi is stopped by the referee as Arnie Scolan picks up right where he left off, thanks to the help of Antonio Pugliese. Now, 
Murray working across the face or windpipe. I can't see from here which. The referee can see, and Jack Davis wastes no time in counting him off. Even though he's uh, caught and has to be counted off the hold, it still has its effect on Arnie Scullin. Again, the count gets to two. Scullin now trying to uh, get a tag off to his partner, Pugliese, but thus far, Aldemori has succeeded in keeping him out of reach. Again, Jack Davis getting that count started. And once more, in Angelo Savoli moving in when he isn't uh, allowed to. Well, once more, Pugliese trying to give Arnie a helping hand. And the referee is apparently convinced that there was a legitimate tag off made there. This is an Australian tag team match, two out of three fall. Two super wrestling shows are set for the New York area at Westchester County Center in White Plains, Monday night, February 14th, and at Whitey Carlson's Beautiful Island Garden in West Hempstead, Friday night, February 18th. Bruno San Martino, wrestling's Iron Man and world's heavyweight champion, will make a title defense on each of these cards, headlining against Big Bill Miller at White Plains, Monday night, February 14th, and against Bobby Davis's undefeated beast at West Hempstead, Friday night, February 18th. Oh, boy. Alamore is showing how strong he was to throw Gugliese off. Now he wants to have Savoldi verify that he was being choked. Look at this double arm stretch that Pugliese puts on. Uh, now Lamore, he uh, has to watch those shoulders, too. He's in position to be pinned. Well, the vibrator going now as Pugliese shakes him up. Savoli yelling to the referee. Uh-oh, a roll-up by Alamori, but uh, he's not going anywhere. His legs pinned, and look at this. Pugliese climbs aboard, and the crowd calling to ride him, cowboy. This is an unwilling buck and bronco. Aldemore not at all happy about this position. Pugliese puts the blinders on him. There, now Tony can see where he is. Indignant. Oh, hey, watch out. Don't you swing at him. This match will be over a lot faster than you think. Alamori claiming that his hair was pulled, that he was humiliated. Alamori. And there go the uh, laces of his shoes. 
Now Savoli joins in. And here comes Scolan to try and even things up. Pugliese took all the steam out of that. Hey, look at this. Pugliese catching Savoli with a flying head scissors. That brought the fans to their feet. Tony Altamore being crashed into the corner. Pugliese. Giving him the twist. Boy, that roughs up those ears. Savoli charging from the rear doesn't catch Pugliese unprepared, man. He can take care of himself, can he? Alamori nailed, Savoli nailed, and look, they're going to try and save one another. Up or down, it didn't matter. Pugliese let him have it. Oh, he's in trouble. He's between them. Right alongside that cauliflower ear. Boy, it's blooming now. Savoli trying to get a bear hug on there, but Arnie takes care of that for Pugliese. And the referee's forced to get him out of that corner. So Ovi, as you can see, using those trunks to get Pugliese over into his end of the ring. But that, well, Arnie's going to be sent back. And that gives Aldemori and Savoli a chance to gang up on Bruno's cousin. <laughs> Alamore using that rope for something beside tag purposes. Pugliese <laughs> tags off to Skolan. Skolan fires him away after nailing him with a forearm to the chin. Paul Nelson by Arnie. <laughs> Alamore's helping hand landed on the wrong spot. <laughs> we may have a vendetta here in the between Alamore and Savoldi. <laughs> Reverse hammerlock, and boy, Savoldi knows how to take advantage of it. The New Jersey veteran banging away, whips him over in a backdrop, body press, two. Nope, Savoldi says, I'm not ready for him yet. I want to hurt him some more. He should have kept him there. Two, three. Alamori caught on the top ropes as he tries to come over and help Savoldi. Skolan getting Savoli with a reverse full leg Nelson. And they got Savoli spinning like a top as Pugliese and Arnie nailing with those flying forearms. Savoli being held in his corner by Aldamori. Let's get a let's get an official word. Aldamori wants to try and get his version announced, but here's the official. Winner of the first fall, ladies and gentlemen, Pugliese and Skolan. There you have it.
have it. The winner of the first fall in this Australian tag team match, two out of three falls between the presenting there. Have to be very careful. Pugliese and Skolan won the first fall, and this could be the deciding fall. Wrestling's top talent will feature new faces while putting some of the good old Jersey bounce into the big show set for Moose Hall in Trenton this coming Monday night, January 31st. Baron Mikel Cicluna, the giant from Malta, bought forearm to the jaw. That was a fist that time. That was no forearm. That was a plain out and out fist. And again, Alamori wings one in from right field. There's the tag off to Pugliese. And Alamori didn't, oh, Alamori did know he was coming in. He clamps the side headlock on. Down goes Pugliese from a jarring shoulder crash. Runs into a body grab. And Pugliese drapes him over in the corner. And his own, Pugliese's own corner. A driving forearm into the midsection. And Skolin and Pugliese have Alamori in trouble. Boy, they're tying him into all kinds of knots. There's that elbow smashing in again. Bruno must have gotten Johnny Valentine to show Pugliese how to do that. Alamori finds he took on more than he bargained for. Boy, did he get cold cocked. Wow! Savoli yelling for Alamori to get over for a tag, but Alamori only hears bells ringing, I'm afraid. Antonio Pugliese grabs him by the hair and sends him spinning. Whoa, a double knee drive right alongside those ears. A body slam by Pugliese. And again he catches Alamori. Pugliese with a crocodile clutch. Two, three. Did Pugliese give him a going over? Wow. And then rolled him up in the crocodile clutch. Here comes the time. Oh, wait a minute. The winners, ladies and gentlemen, in two straight falls, Antonio Pugliese and Arnold Scullin. There. And Savoli. Trying to get him straightened away. There. Savoli and Alamori, they think that the... Uh, and 18 pounds, Pete Sanchez. His opponent at 240, The Beast. Pete Sanchez, the very likable Brooklyn boy. <laughs> He certainly is, uh, has his work cut out for him in this match. The Beast doesn't understand any uh, English, that's for sure. I saw him in one match last week, and I imagine many of you did. And all he knows is just keep going. Just destroy the opposition. says, I don't, I don't want to get out yet, because the minute I take my hands off him, he's unleashed. Well, there's the bell, and there he goes. Sanchez bounced across the ring. And the beach a beast after him, like a wild, just typically like a wild animal, swarming all over him. 
The beast battering away. Sanchez hasn't had a chance to really get started. He's shaken up already. Promoter Whitey Carlson is ringing the bell again with one of his great wrestling shows in the beautiful Island Garden at West Hempstead, Friday night, February 18th. He's headlining the bout all Long Island fans have been looking forward to. Hitting Bobby Davis's new sensation, the fellow you're looking at right now, The Beast, in a title bout against the world's heavyweight champion, Bruno San Martino. You'd better get those seats early. There'll be no advance in admission prices for Whitey Carlson's Wrestling Spectacular at the Island Garden in West Hempstead, Long Island, Friday night, February 18th. Well, you can hear those forearms. He's not too uh, tall, but man, when he lands those forearms, you can hear the crash all over the arena. Bobby Davis meant it literally when he said, I sick them on people. And there's Davis watching the, watching his beast batter Sanchez into the corner. Now he feels the referee isn't, is giving Sanchez too much time to recover. Sanchez trying to counter with a flying head scissors, but the beast refuses to go down, just rams him into the corner. <laughs> the padding on one turnbuckle uh, has been uh, unhooked. And the beast apparently has spotted it. There's no protection when he picks, uh, say, there you are. Our cameras give you a shot of it. And when uh, the beast rams Sanchez into that, that's just plain metal that Sanchez is being met with. A human battering ram. Bobby Davis waves him on. Davis grabbing Sanchez's leg. The beast doesn't need any help, but... He's getting some from Davis anyway. I no sooner gets out of the hands of Davis than the beast is on him in all his fury again. says that thousands of children of living veterans are now eligible for school benefits formerly available only to children of certain deceased veterans. Those additionally eligible are children of veterans permanently and totally disabled by illness or injury attributable to their service. Full details are available from the VA. A wild animal-like roar from the beast as he literally throws Sanchez across the ring. A beast going behind, clamping on a reverse headlock. It's close to the throat. Takes a handful of his face. Notice how the beast is always watching over in the corner at Davis. Ooh. And Sanchez went down like he was hit with a club. Into the corner. Well, that's uh, that one is uh, well padded, fortunately, for Pete. Oh, the beast has him in a rib-crushing bear hug. Throws him down. And a roar of triumph as he clamps on the Boston Crab. The Boston Crab. 
And Sanchez is forced to uh, call uncle, but that doesn't stop the beast. He's waiting for the word from Davis. And Davis taking his own good time about telling him to release it. Well, Davis is doing his best to indicate and finally succeeds in making the beast understand that he's to let him go. Sam. Well, I gave Sam the signal, but apparently the beast doesn't even want Sanchez in there to hear this. The winner, ladies and gentlemen, on a submission hold, the beast. There you get it for everything. Today on Forever Young, we're going to live out one of my basic rules for staying young. Seek out fun, new experiences, and adventures. Somewhere in your life, I just know that just like in my life, you see these deep sea divers in the regions of the sea, and you said, boy, would I like to do that and swim with the fishes. But oh, doggone, how do I do that? I'm not a certified diver. I'm not a scuba diver. It may not be safe. In all those excuses we make, well, we're going to eliminate those today because I'm at the top of a big tank in West Palm Beach, Florida, and I'm here with Andrew, and Andrew's going to show me exactly how I can do that without being a certified scuba diver. Andrew, tell me about going bob diving with the bob. Well, Bob's going to enable you to cruise. Fun, new experiences, and adventures. Somewhere in your life, I just know that just like in my life, you see these deep sea divers in the regions of the sea, and you said, boy, would I like to do that and swim with the fishes. But oh, doggone, how do I do that? I'm not a certified diver. I'm not a scuba diver. It may not be safe. In all those excuses we make, well, we're going to eliminate those today because I'm at the top of a big tank in West Palm Beach. A scuba diver it may not be safe in all those excuses we make well Doggone, how do I do that? I'm not a certified diver. I'm not a scuba diver. It may not be safe. In all those excuses we make, well, we're going to eliminate those today because I'm at the top of a big tank in West Palm Beach, Florida, and I'm here with Andrew, and Andrew's going to show me exactly how I can do that without being a certified scuba diver. Andrew, tell me about going bob diving with the bob. Okay. The air from the scuba tank on the front actually supplies also the up and down controls. Now this, I, I'll be doing that for you. I'll be taking you up and down nice and slowly. Okay. As you do that, you have to equalize your ears. Okay. okay. Just like an airplane. Like an airplane, up. Yep. Okay. If you have a problem with your ears, give me this sign. I want to go up. Okay, dope. So the scuba tank on the front, which gives 50 minutes of air, also supplies over on this side an emergency regulator. So if I run out of air, I can come over and share yours. It also feeds a pressure gauge up in front of you. Uh -huh. It's like a fuel gauge. If it reads like less than 500 psi, it's time to finish your dive and come out. I'm glad you tell me now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 500. The battery supplies power to the steering wheel and the off and on switch. So when you push, you go. If you let go, you stop. Oh, okay. That's the way uh, As you can see down here, the steering controls the rudder okay. and the switch the propeller. All right. Moves me through the water. All right. That's pretty good. That's it, huh? That's it. All right, well, now all my friends out there will really be able to call me Bubblehead. Because <laughs> today I'm going to be a Bubblehead. Let's get at it. Let's have fun and go bob diving. And you help me enter that keeps you young. That's great. You just go through the bubbles. <laughs> go through the bubbles. And speaking of young, anybody can do this. This is the kind of rush that keeps you young. <laughs> 